This is the room <laughs> where Hunter Biden was going to have this deposition. And so now you have the media taking some pictures of basically what is going to be an empty room. I believe we have Miranda Devine with us. Is that right, Miranda? Yes, hi. Hi. I wonder if you could give us your take. You've been covering this issue inside and out. And today, Hunter Biden make, made an interesting choice. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, the arrogance there of making that press conference and refusing to comply with the subpoena is understandable when your father has pardon power. No one really thinks that uh, if push comes to shove that Hunter Biden's going to have to face the music. Um, you know, daddy will just pardon him. So the, the courage that it takes to flout the subpoena is kind of zero, but very cleverly to try and manipulate the public narrative. And that seems to be really more than a legal strategy. This is a public relations strategy to try and get the sympathy uh, of the public. And you, if you notice that uh, Hunter Biden, as his lawyer always does, constantly references his addictions. I mean, in his indictment, that's irrelevant because uh, the, um, the the serious, the felony part of it, um, it particularly to 2020 when he filed tax returns that the DOJ says were fraudulent. He was making these fraudulent deductions uh, for millions of dollars. And, um, you know, there there is already probably $400,000 of tax that he hasn't paid. Um, so this isn't just late tax returns. This is lying on a tax return allegations while he was sober in 2020. Um, and look, um, we just saw he, him saying that there is no evidence that his father was involved in his business. He's mm -hmm. absolutely emphatic about that. Um, and this is the line that the Democrats were trying to run the other day in the hearing with Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler, the two IRS whistleblowers. And look, uh, I think Joseph Ziegler did an absolutely slam dunk uh, response to that in which he just outlined um, just three pieces of evidence and the timeline. You had, first of all, um, you had a situation where Hunter Biden is boasting in an email that he was given, uh, offered $10 million for introductions alone from the Chinese energy company CEFC. And then uh, just a couple of days um, before that, we had um, the WhatsApp message that um, he sent to one of his CEFC Chinese partners um, in which he said, I'm sitting here with my father. We want to know basically right. where is the money? Where's the money? And then um, just a couple of of months before that was the Sinohawk deal with CEFC, and this is something else that Joseph Ziegler points out, which included 10% for the big guy, which is Hunter Biden. Um, this is all very, um, you know, damning evidence which needs to be investigated, and that's why you have an impeachment inquiry. And remember, impeachment is about bribery, high crimes and misdemeanours, and bribery, um, as as Andy McCarthy and Jonathan Turley and many other lawyers have pointed out, the bribery statute does not require Joe Biden to have a check written to him in his name. It just requires uh, evidence of, um, you know, official actions um, given for benefits. And the benefits are to the family members. And that is just as much bribery uh -huh. as if the money went direct to Joe Biden. OK, Look, just, that, just that, to put a button on this, Miranda, OK? Hillary Vaughn's got some sound that we want to play here in a moment here. So stand sure. by, Hillary. But I just want to read you two of the statements that Dan and I wrote down when Hunter Biden was speaking, OK, about an hour ago. He said, my father was not financially involved in my business. Mm -hmm. He said then, there is no evidence because it did not happen. Miranda, in 30 seconds, you've been studying this story for four years at a minimum. How would you, well, look, how would just, you address those statements? That's just untrue. It's more gaslighting from the Biden camp. There is voluminous evidence. I just cited three uh, pieces uh, that show that uh, Joe Biden was involved. He met with, um, you know, many of Hunter Biden's overseas business partners, both in person. He invited them to his vice presidential residence. He went to dinner with them in Georgetown. Um, but also he spoke to them, uh, you know, up to 20 times. I'm told it's much more than that on the speakerphone. He was the product they were selling, and he was well aware of that. Mm, got it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.